I welcome you all to this series. This is Kamal, and I am co-founder at Accelerate AI. As part of this section and series, we are going to walk you through about data science and AI trends. We'll take a look at the Gartner hype cycle. It is extremely important for any data science practitioner to keep a tab on what's happening on an ongoing basis about the trends, whether it is technical advancements, how it is impacting to different industry segments, and what are the areas where there would be more focus. It's, it's very important from that perspective. And in that context, Gartner Hype Cycle presents a very representative view. You can also look into a constant reading of various analyst report forums. For example, it could be Gartner, Forrester, HFS Research, IDC, and so on. Any of these are equivalent reports which would help us give a reflection about what is happening in our area. Let me take you through the uh, Gartner hype cycle. If you look at uh, emerging technologies on this slide, you would see on the left-hand side, there is a hype cycle that is predicted last year, July 2020, by Gartner on the emerging technologies. And there are a lot of specific areas you, you have to look at it from the innovation trigger perspective, and then it moves on to the peak of inflated expectations. And we could see a lot of specific areas around explainable AI, responsible AI, generative AI, composite AI, and adaptive ML are, are one of those. Of course, there are a lot of other aspects as well, but uh, a lot of these technologies are uh, obviously progressing across and will have an impact in the next next few quarters, years to come. On the right-hand side, when you look at artificial intelligence-related technologies that have the innovation trigger and then moves on to the pick of inflated expectations and so on, we could see some similar representations, again, of generative AI, composite AI, adaptive ML, and of course, responsible AI as well. There are a lot of other things you would see around small data, edge AI, decision intelligence, augmented intelligence, of course, are, are some of the things that, that will impact. We are also seeing machine learning, deep neural networks, or, or deep learning, chatbots, computer vision. These have already been on the peak and then now getting into the maturity phase as we look at in the next few years down the line. We would cover two, three aspects of it. When you look at generative AI, then you are talking about ability to generate new or NIST segment or content of, of things that we are doing, right? That's very important to, to focus on and look at it. The aspect of the fact that, you know, when we look at this novel variety of things that can be generated with the help of AI, be it generating songs or generating human-like face images or brilliant art form of paintings, all of these are an example of generative AI. It is also important to think of methods that, that help protect kind of deep fake generative representations as well. You can look at it because it self learns some of the data to generate the quality outputs. And the formats could be, could be text, could be image, could be audio as it, as it trains from all of these. Uh, it also trains uh, reinforcement learning algorithms to be less biased. It also looked into the enablement of localization and regionalization of, of some of the contexts. Now, some of the applications and advantages could be in the areas of identity protection, uh, high resolution of images because it converts from a low image to a much improved image quality. Uh, that as an output that, that it can generate. Um, there is also audio data synthesis that we can think about, and we can also think about some of the healthcare related use cases and then benefits around that. Now, limitations of generative AI could be, uh, it, it's hard to control, uh, right? Because the expected outputs are, are very difficult to control and they're unstable. It is also difficult to explain the model behavior since it is complex, it's difficult from an interpretability perspective to, to explain it. Then there is also pseudo imagination and it needs a lot of training data. We may not get that much of training data in, in niche segment where there is a scarcity of data in particular industry segments. It can also be used for frauds and negative purposes. That has to be like the deep fakes and all that stuff that has to be also 
um, taken care of it, but there's an opportunity uh, for, for us to also look at the fraud analytics part of it and see how uh, you know the fraudulent approach or those things can be prevented uh, with the help of ML. Then we look at adaptive ML. You would have seen this is another point other than generative AI, adaptive ML. Um, some of the applications could be um, you know, your precision farming um, or predicting rainfall in urban infrastructure and so on. Um, this is predominantly the training data when we look at the ability to, to create some of the real-time meta-learning algorithms. Um, this is where we are trying to look at the adaptive machine learning. It learns from small sample sizes, so that way um, it, it is effective. Um, if you have very small sample size and you can create some um, adaptive ML on top of that, um, it also works in the, the dynamic changing scenarios. So probably reinforcement learning mechanisms would be much better because the reinforcement learning models are used for a dynamic changing scenario, kind of an agent state relations. If where you, you take uh, actions in the environment dynamically, if there is um, a positive step or appropriate step towards the goal, then you get reward for it. Otherwise, you get finalized for it. And that's the way um, the machine learns from that kind of thing. So, so this is the second one. And then we move on to the, another point of uh, thing that you have seen in the Gartner hype cycle is about composite AI. Now, composite AI is, is predominantly it aggregates multiple AI systems trained with individually with, with some of the relatively smaller data set instead of kind of a pulling data, right? So it's trained with smaller data sets individually from that perspective. And it's also helpful when there is non-availability of training data in some of the NIST segments. Um, in that case, this can be used. Examples could be classification of molecular images um, and, and so on. Um, and, and it's typically constructed based on multiple neural nets. So you have seen you know, these uh, three things, how uh, generative AI, adaptive machine learning and composite AI and how these are all being you know, part of some of the uh, emerging trends that, that we are seeing um, in this thing. So that's all for now. Um, if you have uh, any questions, feel free, free to have uh, uh, the questions or feedback um, in the comment section here. Um, thank you so much.